um, attempting voodoo. When I was in fourth grade, I actually attempted to kill somebody in my class with a voodoo doll. Obviously, it didn't work, and after that, I was either like, oh, I didn't do it right, or it doesn't work at all. I might have heard voices at some point, and here's why I say that. Ah, here's one. I know there's more talk about it, but I had a dream. Um, I'm not going to say the dream because right, it's not relevant. Um, I kept, after that, um, I kept waking up in the middle of the night. The wind was howling, and I kept thinking there was something in my room. I heard my name... I heard my name called again. I don't remember hearing any of this, but I wrote it down. And when I write in my journals, my journal is the thing that I say everything to. There's some pretty dangerous stuff in here, actually. I read it and I was just like, what? Oh, shit. Come on, where's another one where I said I heard something? It was something like I was hearing something talk in my room. There was a bird in our library. I remember that. Some of the stuff that I read in this just shocks me. Maybe it's in the little one. I ate a lot now I'm not and now I'm not happy. That was the first time I starved myself. I hope I become happy soon. I will not eat again until I'm happy. 10 uh, 10:58 a.m. I'm angry. 2:42 p.m. I feel better. <laughs> I was trying to send an email to Lance and Teresa, but my mom started shouting at me. She chased me into my room. I got dizzy and fell against the door. I couldn't get up straight uh, straight away. I spelled straight wrong. And she opened the door, uh, so she pushed me against Zipper's cage. Zipper was one of my hamsters. She yelled ever louder, got close to me. I could see the evil in that red slimy face, because her face used to get really red. She said that I can't see Lance for two weeks, all of spring vacation. I screamed, spelled screamed wrong. Um, she hit me with a wooden spoon. That's why I'm afraid of wooden spoons. Um, right now I can barely feel my wrist. It, it is red, slowly turning purple. Uh, I will not eat until I'm happy. My happiness, my happiness is gone as though there is a dementor present. I will sit in my room with the shades closed, the door closed, and the light out for two weeks. Save my sanity. I dress in black. I've not eaten. I don't know how I will live through school. I have a purplish reddish mark on my wrist. Um... My mom just came in and yelled at me more. Sulk, sulk. I cry like a rain cloud. I'm really upset. I have a headache and my arms hurt like a monkey. Or like, my arm hurts like a monkey. I'm going insane. Please save me before Lance breaks up with me for my sanity. I will eat lunch today. Love how that's a decision. So obviously my mom hit me on the wrist or something. She used to hit me on the head. I think she either hit me on the wrist or grabbed me on the wrist, but... I think I'm getting a little, uh, Where's the ghost? Everything is Lance, 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 Lance. Hey guys, look! Sticky the female madman. Big spider just landed on me! Why me? I'm tired. I, uh, why can't I understand? I have a spl splitting headache. I want to go home. Yes, I know. I'm writing weird. Why won't I just forget things? I am having a nervous breakdown. I don't want to break up. I don't. I don't. I need to take this out. Um... Uh, I wish I could stab. I'm dizzy. I don't know why. Uh, I don't have the energy to stay awake, but I can't take a nap when I get home because I have to finish coloring the thing. What the fuck was that? Oh, someone must have thrown something at the window or something. Um, I really, 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 really hate my stupid, stinking, spooty, freaking ugly mom. I wish she would just leave forever to a place far away where no one will help her. She's a freak. Hate mom, hate mom, hate mom, hate Aaron, hate Aaron, hate her, hate her, hate her, hate her, hate her. Uh, she is the cause um, of all the pain I suffer. I want to scream. I'm going to scream. If I even think about her, I never loved her, never. But where's the ghost? Oh! There's nothing left in here. Okay, so the reason why I think I might have heard voices is because I wrote about hearing a ghost in my room. But I don't remember hearing the ghost in my room. So, and sometimes they're, uh, the reason why bipolar disorder is sometimes confused with schizophrenic, um, disorder is because sometimes, um, there will be 
hallucinations resulting um, with a certain type of bipolar disorder. Now, I can't prove that I heard voices, but I also can't prove that there was a ghost in my room. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Fred the spider. <laughs> I had a little itty bitty spider. It was about that big. He was in my room. He lived in my corner. And he was in the same exact place for so long that I went up to him and I went onto him to see if he moved and he scuttled up a little more and I was like, you're alive. Okay. So, and he stayed there for so fucking long. I named him Fred and he was my buddy. So I smeared blood on pictures and paper. When I cut myself, I would smear the blood on the pictures that I drew and actually smeared some on my homework one time. The night I had the severe fever. I remember this too. Okay. I don't remember how old I was. I had to be about three or four. I had the worst fever I've ever had in my life. Now, because I had such a severe fever and because it was so long ago, I don't remember, but I feel like, I think I heard my mom say that it was a hundred and six or something, but that's really high. You know, like I heard the highest you can get without going brain dead is like 108 or something. But it was really, really high. And it was so high that we didn't have time to go to the hospital. Funny thing is, is when I had the fever, I didn't feel well. So I knocked on my mom's door to tell her I didn't feel well. And I got hit and screamed at for waking her up. Eventually she felt my head and she freaked out called uh, uh, the hospital line or whatever and they said to you know try to get my fever down and she plunged me into an ice cold bathtub um, ice cold like it was so cold it hurt so bad it I I can't even explain I don't think I've ever had anything hurt that bad like when when you're when you feel that hot and you get plunged into something that cold it hurts and that's really dangerous because I could have gotten hypothermia so but it was the fact that I got hit for having the highest fever in my life she would um, even even as young as two she would hit me with wooden spoons she would force me to open my mouth and she'd drip Tabasco sauce on my tongue those were the main um, punishments. Um, it was always the wooden spoon. There was a time when she broke the wooden spoon over my head. I was tw 12? I had to be about 12 when she did that. She did she did drugs and she drank a lot and and I knew this I was really young, but because of my lost childhood, I lost a lot of innocence. Um, I saw her, her freaking hookah in her room. I knew exactly what it was, but I said, Mom, what is this? And she said, it's an incense burner. And now I really wish that I could have just said, no, Mom, it's not. I had to be about seven when I discovered that, and I felt so disappointed that for one, she'd have that, and for two, she'd lie about it. But then again, she's lied to me all my life. So, um, she used to bring home random guys she found on the street. Most of these guys would probably go a couple of hours before my mom kicked them out because they tried to do something to her or me, or actually try to do something to her that she didn't want because I know exactly why she brought random guys home. Every single one of them was filthy and scary and creepy and just ev like almost every night. And I just I'm I was I'm kind of afraid of men for that reason. Getting kicked out, moving frequently. She spent most of her money on drugs, cigarettes, and alcohol. So obviously, we often got evicted. And when we didn't get evicted, we would get kicked out by her boyfriends. And there were so many times um, where we were homeless with 
whatever we could carry on our back. There was a time when I lived in a place called Coco Lala. Yes, it's a real place. It's a very, very, very small place in Idaho. Um, let's see if I can find it, actually. Wow. Sorry. Anyway, so I lived in Coco Lala. We lived in a really small house, and it was during the winter. It was so cold that the lake we lived out front, uh, lived in uh, front of, or the lake that was in front of where we lived, was frozen solid. It was frozen so solid that we could walk on it. It was just frozen. My stepdad, my lovely stepdad, his name was Mike. So in this video, I'm going to refer to Mike as my stepdad and Michael as my roommate. It's a very common name, unfortunately. Mike threw all my mom's stuff out into the snow, threw my stuff out into the snow, and we were homeless. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning in the snow until we found, I don't know where we went. I think it was one of those like 24 hour gas stations or something where all we could afford was the microwavable noodles. We had to eat them dry because they didn't have a microwave. Honestly, I don't even know how the hell we got out of, out of that. I, maybe she begged Mike to let us come home. I don't know, but it was freezing and it was snowing and that happened so many times. And I've been to so many, many elementary schools, I can't even remember half their names and it was so hard for me to make friends and that's why most of my life I didn't have that's one of the reasons most of my life I didn't have friends another one is I was that creepy little blonde girl not creepy that shy little blonde girl who never spoke to anyone sat next to a wall and looked at her feet irresponsibility of both families on my side um, well you know my dad never hit me but he also was never there never paid child support when I lived with him um, I was so skinny from living with my mom that he actually um, brought me to a healthy weight because even though he barely had any money, he had enough for us to get cheap food because, you know, he was a better parent than mom. He was a terrible parent, but better than, better than Aaron. I'm still trying to get into the habit of doing that. So, you know, in both sides of my families. I don't even. When I was in fourth grade, one of the schools I went to when I was in fourth grade was called Silver Hills. There was this bully in my class and his name was Seth. He made fun of me a lot. Him and his friends did. One time at recess, he cornered me. There was this like area that was kind of, it was like trees and it was snowy. Um, it was during the winter. It's always during the winter. and. Um, it, there was a lot of snow on the ground, and there was like this gap in the middle of these trees, and he and two other friends had picked me up, brought me there, and Seth was trying to choke me. He had me, his arm was around me against my throat, trying to choke me, and the only way I could get out was to bite him. I bit him, and I ran back to my class, and guess what? I got detention. And I tried to tell the principal, Seth was choking me, and he said, you know, if you are not eating enough, we can always give you, you know, extra food at lunch. And I'm like, he was choking me, okay? And I got detention for that. After that, I was just like, okay, that's over. And one time at recess, I walked by Seth. And, you know, he did what bullies do and you know, did the thing that bullies do, and guess what? I got detention for biting him a second time, even though I didn't bite him a second time. It's because he went to the principal and said, Oh no, Kara bit me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was fun. Almost being choked to death and getting detention for it. I got, I had to write 50 lines because in the same school, same principal, I had to write 50 lines because I wasn't running in gym. I was holding my stomach, feeling extremely nauseous, and not running. Teacher kept telling me to run. I said, I don't feel well, and I continued to walk because I was afraid if I stopped, I would get in even more trouble. Turns out, I had the stomach flu. I got assigned 50 lines to write, I will not walk in class. And I spent most of my time in the hospital office, the nurse's office, 
laying down, and sleeping. People tried to bring me food, and I couldn't eat because I was throwing up. Um, my Aaron was at work, so she couldn't come pick me up, so they had called um, a policeman to take me home. I was sick for a month with the stomach flu. It was like, it was the worst time I had this, uh, it was the first time I had the stomach flu, and it was the worst stomach flu I've ever had. Guess what? I still had to write the lines. My Aaron was not happy about that. I mean, obviously, there were some times when Aaron was a good mother, and that was one of the times. Oh, yes. The reason why I'm afraid of having sharp things near my neck. I lived in Mullen, Mullen, Idaho. Is this was one of the, my most favorite places to live because it was a really small small town. And it was a really small house that I really liked, um, but I didn't have a bedroom in that house. I slept in the living room because there was only two bedrooms, and my brother had the other one. So obviously, I was the smallest, so I had to sleep on the couch. I lived in Mullen, and I was walking around. Um, I was walking around uh, the area. There was um, a swimming hall, and then there was also the um, the town city hall thing, the main thing, like you know, the thing. And I was just you know walking around. I was going to my friend's house, and a couple of my brother's friends got me, and they held me against the wall. And one of them had a rusty sickle. A sickle is a short version of a knife. It was a real sickle. It wasn't one of those plastic Halloween ones. It was a real sickle. And... Sorry. And they held it to my neck, and I don't know what would have happened. I don't know if they would have actually done something to me, but my brother came running up and punched his friend in the face, the one that was holding the sickle. Punched him in the face and grabbed me and started screaming at him. And... I think, I'm pretty sure he took me home. I don't know. I was really freaked out. I was forced to eat dirt because I refused to eat candy corn. My friends wanted me to eat candy corn. I knew I hated candy corn. I still hate candy corn. So they shoved my face in dirt and started shoving dirt into my mouth. I was made fun of for being blonde. Obviously, that is one thing that people make fun of for you when you're a kid is you're blonde and you're dumb. I've never met a natural blonde who was actually really stupid. I'm just saying. I'm not saying there they aren't some out there, but I really don't know where the stereotype comes from. Um, I had very few friends. Honestly, already told you about that. I got made fun of for how I dress and who I hung out with. Um, I dressed completely normal before um, before eighth grade. Well, technically before seventh grade, because seventh grade I was just so fed up with it that I started dressing like everybody else and started wearing makeup, even though I didn't want to at that time. I got made fun of for who I hung out with because in middle school, middle school was probably the worst time, worst times of my life. I got made fun of so much, and I got even more f made fun of when I hung out with the only people who actually were honest and liked me, and those were the retarded kids. I had a couple of friends that had Down syndrome, and I hung out with them at lunch. I had conversations with them. Even though, you know, I wasn't in any special ed class, I wasn't retarded. I'm saying that because it's a pretty offensive term. Um, but they were the only ones who were kind to me. And because of that, people made fun of me and said that I was retarded and that I was in special ed. And I never was. I was never in special ed. Sorry. Um, but I dress, I dress completely normal. And I, I just got made fun of. I was pushed on ice when I, again, in Silver Hills. I, um, somebody pushed me down on um, this really thick piece of ice that had, um, that had frozen over the asphalt. And I nearly got a con concussion. And I was brought to the office and had people making sure that I didn't pass out. Um, I was made fun of for caring about animals. That was in sixth grade. I don't understand why that would be something that you make fun of at. I had th things thrown at me throughout my life. Um, I've had, you know, the normal balls of paper thrown at me. I've had pencils and pens thrown at me. I've had hard book, hard cover books thrown at me. Pretty big books, too. Um, rubber bands, sunflower seeds. God, what else? There was something else. There was something else. What was it? 
Okay, well, I can't remember what else, but the books hurt them much, obviously. And pencils hurt pretty bad, too, especially when they were sharp. Um, I think people tamper with my possessions. I had somebody steal my journal out of my desk. It was locked. It was one of my friends who I thought was my friend. Um, I had people get into my backpack and either steal stuff or defile them in some way. Police are not believing me. This is why I'm afraid of police, even though being older now I know that I'm okay to be honest with them and everything, but I, it's still, I'm still really scared to talk to them. Whenever someone comes in to buy something, I'm automatically afraid that they're gonna accuse me of something, because when Erin abused me, she would call the police on me and make it seem like it was my fault. And I had scars to prove it at some point. I have, um, I really don't know if you'd be able to see them. They're on this arm. Um, Aaron had taken my arm and dug her nails into it so much that I was bleeding. And I have a couple of the scars on here. I don't know if you can see them. Probably not. They're, they're small now. It was a really long time ago. There's three of them. There's one here, one here, and oh, where's the other one? Right here. And she had taken my arm and dug her nails into it. I was bleeding. Police came by, and I said, look what she did to me. And nothing. Nothing. They did absolutely nothing. Every time she called the police on me, because she was attacking me, they believed her. And there was uh, that, that same day where I had the scratches on my arm because of her, I sat in my room with my ear pressed against the door. I heard the police guy say, you can hit her as long as it's not with a closed palm. Well, do you think that stopped her? No. But the fact that he gave hit her permission to hit me. Um, I had a scratch on my face because my mom... Aaron was yelling at me again, and she threatened to kill my hamster, and she took the hamster into her room, and so I tried to get at her, and she scratched my face, and I had a really long scratch that I'm surprised isn't a scar. I don't even remember the excuse I made when I went to school, but it was really, it was, it was long. It was right here, and it was really long. Um... Erin pushed me down in the bathroom, she pushed me down on the hard floor in the bathroom, and I had to kick her to get her away from me. You know, I had to resort, resort to self-defense, and I told the police that. I said, she was doing this, and I had to do this, I don't want to get hurt. Everyone told me I wouldn't succeed, even my father. There's one time when my father actually said, when, you, when you're 16, you're going to get pregnant, and you're going to come to us for money, and we're not going to be there for you. Well what dad I've never gotten pregnant you know I've never I'm not stupid enough to do that and even when I was 19 when I was in Washington um, my grandma Sato who is um, my dad's father I mean mother sorry um, she took me to the mall to go shopping and she used to do this when I was a kid too she'd be really really nice and then at the end of the day she'd ruin it by saying something stupid she kept me she kept me at this Red Robin type restaurant there um, you know she got some margaritas and stuff and I said I wasn't hungry so I didn't get anything she kept me for there for two hours telling me specifically what I was gonna do wrong in my life she told me you're never gonna get to college you're gonna get taken advantage by some guy you're gonna come to us for money and you know what we're not gonna be there for you guess what grandmother Carol I didn't have to come to you. I didn't have to come to you for money. I didn't have to go to anybody for money. I haven't even spoken to you people since since I came freaking came back from Washington. Don't fucking tell me that I'm not going to succeed. I've done more than both of my parents have done combined. I told myself I wasn't going to cry. I've never had to ask anybody for money, not even when I was a kid. 
I saved that money by working as hard as I possibly could. I didn't have a job when I came back from Washington. So I had to... And I was living with Ariel and they were poor and I had to... I didn't eat much and then I went to beauty school and then I got the job and I was able to finally start doing something for myself but then Aaron always used to tell me you know you're not you're not gonna get past high school you're not gonna get into college you you won't be able to do anything for yourself and I think it's because she never did anything she never even graduated middle school she dropped out and ran away with some 20 year old and got pregnant with my brother at like 16 I was scared to wake Aaron up because whenever I did she would scream at me and or hit me so now I'm afraid to wake anybody up so when I wake up before somebody I quietly go to a different room and what did Is my, are my eyelashes coming off because of that I hope not oh I'm ruining my makeup fuck sorry <laughs> I told you I might yell um where was I yeah I'm uh I'll let whoever is with me wake up on their own because I'm afraid and they, they go why didn't you wake me up I'm like cuz I was afraid you were gonna get mad um, again I already mentioned I was fright I'm frightened whenever somebody raises up a hand or utensils too quickly cuz you know I used to get hit Grandma Sato left me in a car when I was nine left me in a car for a couple of hours she said stay here I'll be back in a minute I don't know where she went she went to some shop or something for a few hours without food I was hungry I told her I was hungry before she le left and she's like okay I'll be right back and she had gotten me a candy bar that I could eat after we went out for lunch and since I was sitting there for a couple of hours maybe three hours I don't know I was starving I was nine so I took the candy bar took a bite and put it back and I got in trouble I got in trouble because I was a hungry child who didn't have anything to eat. And I got in trouble. And my dad was mad at that. You know, at least at least my father was a good enough parent. You know, good enough parent to do that. He he his his heart was in the right place. He just didn't have the common sense to take care of a child. I was kicked in the stomach multiple times in my life by my cousins, by friends. Um my journals. Oh. This is my birthday. Okay, I can't believe I didn't write in you on my birthday. What the fuck is my problem? Anyway, so far for presents, I've gotten a digital camera. The rest um, are going to be at my B-Day party uh, this Saturday. My daddy called me on my birthday. Uh, so did my mom, but she doesn't count. My brother called, but I wasn't home. I hope I get Invader Zim stuff on my birthday. Oh, that was when I started Jan and all evil things fuzzy. Let's go back where I was in 8th grade. <laughs> ah. I hate a lot of people. I hate cheerleaders. I hate being treated badly. I hate pain. I hate lie lights. I hate... Caitlin Rakowski was a girl who betrayed me. Um, I hate being told what to do. I hate being bothered. I hate meat. I hate my mom. I hate being called names. I hate monkeys. I don't know why I hated monkeys. I hate hunger. I hate God. I was an atheist at the time. I hate enthusiasm. I hate pretty and pink. And now pink is my favorite color. I hate my grandmother. Um, I hate all acquaintances with my grandmother. I hate all my neighbors. I hate people insulting my boyfriend. I hate not getting past a level in the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> I don't want to suffer. It takes away my life. I can't handle it. It pierces like a knife. Apparently this is a poem. Enough of this torture. Just leave me alone. I don't want to fight. I just want to stay home. I don't need this thing. I don't need pain. It's like, uh, it's like my loss uh, is other people's gain. How can they understand? Uh, they can't. They won't. I don't need this pain. I don't. I just don't. I wasn't made to live. I was made to die. So, world, this is farewell. This is goodbye. Um, let's do one that's earlier. Trying to forget, Lance. I'm doing a pretty good job by letting out my anger and disturbed music and becoming a goth. I want to see Disturbed in Concert so bad. Mike Wengren is cute. He's the drummer. As for being gothic, I can't dye my hair until I'm 16. It freaking sucks. I didn't even own any black until I started to be gothic. Um, I seen it coming. This was this was the one before this one. I seen it coming on the last day of uh, school. Lance broke up with me. Uh, I'm so miserable. I miss him. I have dreams about him every night. Part of my dreams last night was I was in a house where you go through mirrors and the uh, and in the end, Lance quartered me in the closet. Told me hiding would not solve anything. <laughs>